Hello everyone, I am David de Torres from Sysdic and I will talk about service identification with Prometheus. First of all, let's talk a little bit about service discovery. Service discovery is just great. It allows us to scrape almost anything with just a couple of annotations and just a single job. Here, there are some examples for sure you're familiar with. In this pod, for example, we added the scrape Annotation equals true and the port number. Here we added the path, for example, and all of them will be scraped with just single job. That for sure you have seen before. This is great, but what if we want to make something special with some of the jobs, some of the services, like for example, adding some extra labels for enrichment or whatever we need, or dropping some labels of a metric that has a high cardinality to reduce that or just directly drop some metrics that we don't use or adding some relabeling that we need for some of the metrics. We just cannot do that if one job makes everything. We need to identify the pods, but we still want to use the default Prometheus annotation. So what can we do? Well, here's the first idea. We can use a new annotation. Here we use, for example, Prometheus.io slash service. And in this pod, this new annotation equals service A. To make a new job that uh, identifies and select the pods with the new annotation, we just add the action keep with the source label, the new annotation that we created service, uh, service equals service A. And this job will select these pods and scrape only these pods. After this, we can add the drop in labels, metrics, relabeling, whatever we need. Also, Remember that you have to remove these pods from the generic job because else it will be scraped more than once. How would we do that? Well, here we added a new rule that says drop all the, met all the pods that has the annotation not empty. This is okay if we can use the annotations, but this is not always true. Sometimes we cannot just annotate pods because maybe they are in restricted environments that we don't have access to that. Maybe we don't even have access to the pods of the deployment because we are not the owners of that. Or maybe we have access, but we, they cannot be just restarted because they are critical services. So if we cannot annotate the pods, how we can identify that one pod belongs to a application or a service. Well, here is the idea. We can use the information that the service discovery offers and make some heuristic roles. For example, we can use the container name inside the pod or the pod name to say, okay, if there is a pod where it has a container with the name Kida Operator Metrics API Server, I can say that this is a Kida Operator or Kida API, API Server, and I can identify that and I can make a specific job for that. Or maybe I know that the service is exposing the port 9113 and it is annotated. So I can say, okay, I will select all the pods annotated with the Prometheus.io port equals 9113. And I will use that for making a special job for that. Also, this has a limitation that remember that you have to add this same rule with the drop action to the generic rule because else, as we saw before, it will be scraped more than once. So as conclusions, we can say that service identification rules are easy to implement and they're powerful because it allows us to make a special things with these pods. But it has some limitations. Like for example, as we saw, uh, there is no standard annotation for that right now. I used, for example, Prometheus.io slash service, but maybe you can use Prometheus.io slash application or service name or application name or integration type, whatever you can come up with. So it depends on the implementation. Also, as you saw, one of the problems that we are having is that we are still using the Prometheus annotations and the pod will be selected more than once and it will be scraped more than once, making this metric um, duplicated. So how can we prevent that? Here we use another rule to drop metrics, but maybe we can 
use a new option in Prometheus to prevent the pod or the endpoint to be scraped multiple times, even if it is present in different jobs. Also, we are using some information that the Kubernetes service discovery offers, but maybe there can be more information available to make better heuristic rules, like for example, the image name of the container. I hope you enjoyed this talk and you saw it's useful. Enjoy the promcom. See you later.